Okay, um, today we're going to make a 10 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. This is our, going to be our lye solution for making the soap. We're making this in advance because it uh, will, it is a very, dissolving it is very exothermic. It will take time uh, for the solution to cool down and we want it to be at about room temperature before we use the sodium hydroxide. Uh, so we're going to weigh it on the scale, uh, 10 molar at a molecular weight of 40.00 grams per mole is um, going to give us uh, for 100 milliliters or one tenth of a liter, we're going to have to weigh out 40 grams on this little tiny scale. So we're going to try to protect the scale with a weigh paper. take something, uh, repurpose something that we've already read to recycle it, uh, turn it on. It will zero automatically, but uh, of course we're going to put this paper on it. And so we want to press the tear button to have it zero with the paper on it because, well, we don't want to measure the paper. We're not dissolving the paper in anything. Um, there's the sodium hydroxide. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Notice uh, the molecular weight is right on the bottle. It's often called a formula weight because they base it just off of the uh, atomic elements in the chemical formula. Okay. Um, with sodium hydroxide, you generally want to use plastic utensils and uh, store it in plastic. I'm going to put it in here when we're done, uh, rather than glass, because sodium hydroxide will etch glass very nicely, actually. You can put patterns on glass that way, and well, we don't want that. So we weigh it very carefully. Um, they say that you should use gloves with sodium hydroxide because it's called caustic. Um, but if you get any on your skin, uh, just wash it off. It won't sting for a while. Um, it's really, uh, that's 40.06 grams there. And we can tolerate uh, six, ten, six hundredths of a gram of error. Okay, close that back up. Um, yeah, so it, it's not really going to dissolve your uh, flesh from your bones immediately. Okay, and now, well, we're going to try to pour it gracefully into the bottle. Uh, might be easier to just scoop it in. Uh, yes, 10 molar is a very concentrated solution. Now, soap is often made from what's called potash or a lye solution, which is literally the sodium and potassium collected from wood ashes, preferably a hard wood, um, and dissolved in water. Uh, and it makes an alkaline solution, which is what sodium hydroxide will do. Alkaline means a shortage of uh, hydrogen ions. Whoa. See, and the skin is still there. Uh, it'll uh, generally you want to wash your hands when you're done with any laboratory procedures. Gloves, um, well, this is the apocalypse. They're a little hard to come by right now. But uh, as you, I'm not feeling anything from the sodium hydroxide. Okay. Once the, that's in there, I'm going to get 100 milliliters of water, which we'll measure in this device here. Can anybody recall what this device is called? Hey, Madeline? Yes? Do you know what this is? Gr graduated, a graduated cylinder. That's right. It's a graduated cylinder. I hope you guys knew that. Ideally, one would use 
distilled water, that is water that's been boiled and then the steam condensed in order to uh, make um, perfectly clean or pure water. Um, this Brita water filter is somewhat similar to a deionizer. The filter will remove chlorine ions and uh, some other salts from the water. And uh, I have a still, but water is expensive and this is the apocalypse. So we'll use deionized water. And basically we're just gonna pour directly into the graduated cylinder. Two 100 milliliters. Oop. Remember to read the volume from the bottom of the meniscus, the curve in the water, not the cartilage in your knee. So we want to look at the curve in the water. And uh, just slightly above 100. That's good enough. Now, this is water from um, Felton in, San in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And the water we get here is the kind of sludge that you could get all of your nutritional uh, needs from. Just like in that, there's a movie on Netflix, an uh, anime movie called Blame, where the people eat the sludge from the water pipes. Very similar. So sodium hydroxide should be clear in solution. This is going to produce a very cloudy solution. It's already warming up. And uh, that means some of the sodium hydroxide is being consumed, making salts in reactions. And that's a bummer, but it will still work. Heck, they make soap from um, a lye solution made from the ashes from your fireplace. Uh, it's a pretty robust procedure. So it's warming up, and the word for that is that the reaction, so it's solid sodium hydroxide going to sodium hydroxide in solution, so going from an S to a AQ state, solid to aqueous, is exothermic. Thermic, kind of like heat. Exo is out, so it gives heat off or makes heat go out. And uh, so don't put the cap on too tight or it will uh, crack the uh, bottle eventually as the heat builds up and thus the pressure. Always, always, always label your solutions in the bottle so that you can figure out what it is later on. And uh, having made our lye solution for soap, um, we'll shake it and let it dissolve and cool off and use it later. So basically, I've measured out 300 grams of plain old vegetable oil. Any will do, soybean oil. Um, heck, you could even make soap from bacon fat. Yes, that's right. Bacon flavored or scented soap. And we have the 10 molar sodium hydroxide. We should be ready with some molds. Uh, you can use, a, you know, you should use something that's flexible, uh, silicon molds, or something you don't mind tearing apart, uh, you know, to get the soap out after it's cured some. Okay, and then basically, we're just going to add the sodium hydroxide. You see the problem with Lompico water. This should be clear. Okay, so I'd like to get distilled water for this, but this should still do the job. And we're just going to add it to the vegetable oil. Shake it out a bit. Okay. And now we're going to begin uh, mixing. Okay, uh, I would recommend a, a hand mixer like this. Uh, <laughs> And now we're basically going to mix it until we get what's called a trace. That is where as the, the uh, soap drips back into the bottle uh, container, it leaves a trace where the, where the uh, uh, soap hits the surface. Um, that means that it's quite stiff, actually. 
Um, and so it's a very simple task of merely stirring this for basically the rest of your life. I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> Oh, did I mention safety glasses are required? You don't want to get soap in your eyes. All right. Eventually, by the time you're old and gray, and you completely lost interest in the entire project, you'll get, it'll thicken up quite a bit and you'll get uh, a trace. Can we see this here? It actually, you know, leaves little lumps and you can see where the spoon stirred it. And, uh, and it's ready to pour into the bowls. Now, there's a trick to this. Um, well, not much of a trick. Don't use these little paper cups, like, for example, wax-covered uh, paper. They use the wax to keep the water from going through the paper, and then you can drink all the soda or whatever it is you want um, through these cups. But the wax is a hydrophobic substance, water hydrophilic. Now, soap, the oil that we're using here, those triglycerides we've um, been using and breaking them down actually with sodium hydroxide, is amphipathic. It's both hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Uh, it will go right through this wax in the blink of an eye. It'll dissolve the wax and then the cup will basically uh, leak oil all over the place. These kinds of cups won't work for uh, hydrophobic or amphipathic substances. Uh, the best kind of a mold would be a, a flexible mold, silicon like this. So you'll be able to get it out very easily. Um, and I haven't tried it yet, but styrofoam cups, I mean, if you really want to hate on some sea turtles, this is the ticket right here. Um, styrofoam cups should work as well. So we're ready to pour it into the molds. So once you've poured the soap into the molds, whether you have... Um, flexible silica molds or something like um, something that's disposable like a styrofoam cup mold. Um, set them aside for a couple of days. The uh, soap will harden up enough that you can take them out of the molds. At which point uh, you take, take them out of the molds. That's great. And set them aside again for another six to eight weeks. So do yourself a favor and put the date on uh, alongside the soap. And uh, in six to eight weeks, you will be ready to have some good, clean fun. Okay, take care all, and don't forget to wash your hands.